Hi everybody, it's us, Todd and Aaron, on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. You know, every now and then there are certain life lessons that must be learned in order to keep your marriage. Because it's either keep your sanity or, or not. But so what That's you it, I can see this working for younger couples, but the older couples, it's, it's been it's too, too long. Mm -hmm. You can't teach it up. But you know what? Some people genuinely may not know that these things will set their partner off into a frenzy so intense that it feels like their brain is exploded and is coming out of their eye socket. So we're going to start with basics, and I'm the victim. We call this How to Save Your Marriage, Parts 1 and 2. You got it? Yeah, no, what are we doing? Oh what are we doing? Oh, my dove. All right, you know I love you, right? Hmm? You're my, the love of my life, my husband of almost 21 years. Can you believe that? The man that I worship, the man that I adore, and you do so many amazing things for me and the family, and I love you so much, but I want you to just, there's a couple of things. And I thought we could make a video so you could review it later on. Okay? Let me introduce you to this. This. This would be a paper towel holder. It keeps the paper towels upright so you can spin them and remove them from the paper towel holder, thus using them wherever you were planning. Now, the trouble is, when there's nothing but an empty paper towel holder, there is nothing for us to use. So let me introduce you to the system. You see, there's a hole in the paper towel that slides directly over the spindle of the paper towel holder. Then, as you lift the top, this will keep the paper towels stable on the paper towel holder and thus you can go with abandon yeah. welcome to part two of crucial life skills here in the collared household why are we doing this oh like my little dove <coughs> yes you just, you just wait for a minute all right today we're going to examine the intricities of the toilet paper roll now you may notice that it's got a hole on one side and a hole on the other these are utilized by putting on the paper on the toilet paper holder so that you can actually utilize it. Are you ready? We have possibly the simplest toilet paper holder on the planet when it comes to replacement. You take your finger, you lift it lightly like so, and you remove the empty toilet paper holder. Now, you will see that delightful toilet paper we were talking about you put it on the straight part that is now up and turn it horizontal again and look look now I'm not even going to argue with you about which way the toilet paper should roll I don't even care that's 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 something for another life skills informational video but as you see it's delightfully simple now let's review shall we once again you're saying oh no look at this there's no toilet paper on the dispenser. Rather than leaving this for the next person to be trapped, I will take my finger. I will lift it up. I shall remove said toilet paper roll. I shall place it here. And then I shall find myself a lovely, fresh, brand new roll of toilet paper. I will put it on the spindle, throw it down, and voila! Toilet paper. There you go. I can see people hugging each other people already. Mm-hmm. Our marriage is being saved. Our, our, our toilet paper holder is so cool, you want it changed before it's done. It really, it could do it itself probably. It really could. It could probably just go oh, for help. Anyway. Sake, let me do it. All right, this is like a horror movie. I mean, it is. you know the horror movies where you keep screaming at them, get out of the house or the haunted farm or the haunted swamp, I don't know. You're like, go, pack a suitcase, go, go, and nobody does. West Valley. This is so sad. This is Roots Charter High School, and it's a pretty cool concept. Basically, the students are planting crops, they're taking care of livestock, and the way they do it is they have to get a loan from the state right. to buy the animals. It's like 4-H, except this is different because there's you make money. Yeah, super intense. Yeah. And so at the end of the project, then they sell the vegetables at farmer's markets, and they sell the animals for things. Eat. But they become really attached to these creatures, so they came back to school and some dog had apparently gotten through the fences and killed two alpaca. 
the nice little alpacas who mind their own business. Wow. That's your first freaking day of school. Hey, wow. there are the two alpacas I named and I was petting them and loving them and they're gone now. So that's good. Now, get this. It just gets worse and worse. Poor Kenzie Wallace said, I cried so much when it happened. But it's gotten worse. Okay, since then, the, the neighborhood dog has not only killed the two alpacas, this must be a big, mean dog. Why don't you just walk over to the neighbor's house? And two goats and two sheep. Well, they don't know who it is, though. And last night, apparently, it severely injured a piglet, and they had to put the piglet down. So the kids are screwed because these animals have died. They still have to pay back the loans to the state, and they don't have any animals to sell. So here, here's, the, here's the thing where they're at now. The state has kind of jumped in and said, let us help you with this. They get, like, expert trackers and stuff, and they're going, uh oh. West Valley Mayor Ron Bigelow stopped by the farm. Uh, Carrie Gibson with the Department of Natural Resources stopped by. They're like, we'll make a plan. But this is the thing that's so funny. They're like, animal control has been out here like every They've day. They've been working hard. And they still can't find them. They said it's really difficult. So now the state's going, perhaps a bigger trap. So they're sending in the big traps. Yeah. But at this point, I'm assuming somebody is spending the night there. They're like, okay, so in West right? Valley, is your dog not eating dinner at home? This is so sad. The community, I mean, God bless everybody in West Valley City. Apparently, they've donated thousands of dollars to fix the fence because mm -hmm. this dog, this mm -hmm. must be like the monster super dog of all time, like right. like titanium teeth dog because it's broken through fences, so mm -hmm. they've had to replace the fences, and the community's helped them fix the fence and donated money, but, but they now, still have $5,000 they have to pay back to the state. That's right, and that's why they have a GoFundMe site. Oh, it's so sweet. It's GoFundMe Help Roots With Our Loss. GoFundMe, it's Help Roots with our loss if you want to help it. At this point, this is like at, at the, the climax of the horror movie where everyone's like, how many times do we have to repeat that you have to leave the farm? When are they gonna find the evil dog with titanium teeth? I don't know, but the first time that somebody says, I'm gonna take this sketchy flashlight and go check out behind the barn. Strange noises. Don't open the door after that person leaves, that's all I'm saying. Mm, all right. Probably so. Um, everybody well, said, that door everyone's, noise. Oh, dorm rooms? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, right, right, right. Um, now, you had dorm rooms. You were yeah, we'll start, let's start the story with, with me driving to, to Zachary's school yesterday. And we live by the university. And the university kids are all back. And you can see it. You can feel it. You can see it. Because they, they're, they're out of their home. They're at school. They're an adult. They're gonna, Freedom. They're going to try on their adult suit and see how it fits. And the guy, I have to stand up to do this. And the guy's sitting at the, what, the crosswalk waiting to go. And he's just like, okay. He goes, yeah, my hair's good. Looks Aww. down. Got that going. Shoe looks good. That's okay. endearing. Oh, my god. I'm gosh. an adult. I'm now going to go to college. And you go off to college. Um, but you can see it. The women are the same way. And they're, they're checking themselves, looking down, making sure they're, they're all cool. And they're not dressed up. They're, they're dressed up, you know, like college kids. Well, like um, a cool college Yeah. Kid. But I thought it was really cool. Then I read this report, and I've seen these pictures of people's dorm rooms. This is my sister so badly. This it, is so my sister. It's like someone takes a, an Ikea hand grenade and throws it into a room and then opens the door. It is, and, and oh. now that what they're saying now, the sociologists and all this stuff are saying the fact, don't decorate your kid's room. This is so Issa and Mary Helen. My this nieces, is like... They, my sister bought like furniture and wallpaper and all this stuff went in and like gang decorated their rooms. I don't think they knew what hit them. I mean, it's one thing to wake up in the morning and not know where you are, but it's another thing to wake up in the morning going, where am I? Why is, really? Where am I here? Why is Ikea staring at me in the face? So anyway, that's what they're saying. It's another helicopter parent thing where it's like, well, I'm going to decorate the way that I want to decorate. It's got to be super cute because it's your first year. My, yeah, go buy them a mini fridge, okay? They'll be fine. My parents dropped me off with a um, Swedish ivy, a plant that I had. Uh, uh, I'm amazed you were that thorough, to be honest. A sea trunk full of stuff and um, a bunch of clothes. And if it, huh. if it was in the day of trash bags, it would have been that way. It's like, pfft, have, have a good time in nowhere, Maine. See ya, bye. And you walk into that experience and you're like, but you know, I love. You're this. in a door. You're you're a. It's like playing hooky, but forever. I just love your particular college, though, because it was an agricultural college. So it was like your decor was like plaid and lumber. I mean, that was really pretty much what all anyone expected. It always smelled like two cycle oil from people's chainsaws they'd bring inside, and in the middle of Maine, wildlife forestry management, and um, 
one of the things I remember, and I did the same thing to my room. We painted the I painted the room like a dark blue. It was, and it was so a, it was cavernous and creepy. That's it cool. was, and uh, and it was um, it was co-ed back back in those days. So it was like whoa, wait out of here. And I remember the first moment I laid in bed and stuff, and I put some Christmas lights up and dark and I'm like this, and I got music playing. And I and I thought, you know, what made me so sad is that no woman would ever see that, ever. Ever, ever. Oh, honey, because you'd made a lair. It was a lair, and there would be no one there. It didn't help. You also went to a college with like 500 guys and 17 women. That did lower. Twelve, your... but I'm gonna leave it there. That would lower your. Which mind. makes a huge difference when you're living in the middle of the winter. Oh, right? I can only imagine. Okay, um, coming up next. This is so cool. How many times have you said I can't get a sitter? I've said it like 373 times this week. Today. Um, there's a Utah mom that's come up with a genius, freaking idea. We'll tell you about it next. The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. So we haven't found a babysitter yet. No, it's, it's a multiple series of babysitters, honey. There were overnight babysitters and picking up from school and staying with them babysitters. And then there are the extensive weekend babysitters. This is like a tap dance of babysitters, a ballet. Is this going to help us, the new thing I found? It's pretty interesting. Now, you've thought about all these global sharing platforms we've heard about. I mean, that's how Airbnb started. Mm -hmm. um, ride sharing or home sharing. Right. Um, even couch surfing, they've got a whole site for you. You can surf on my couch while you're going through the world. But this one's genius. She launched a site. It's for parents across the globe. They've already got global signups right. everywhere for a solution for child care. You, you save friends on your wish list. Right. You save people that you like. You go through their profiles and go, right. oh, I like her. I knew her before. And then they call it Momni. Now, Momni is really sweet. It comes from the Latin word Omni, meaning all and everywhere. And then Mom, Momni. So basically, you can sign up to get care or you can sign up to get money, like maybe if you want to earn extra money and, and you need to be at home. Oh, so locally you can go babysit. Yeah, so you go, well, no, they'll drop the kids off at your house. So you go through the profile and you match it up and you find people you feel comfortable with. There's background checks. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, there's different criteria, like do you have guns in the home? Do you mm -hmm. have pets? Mm -hmm. uh, some people choose not to do a background check. Mm. Um, she did remind everyone that you will more likely get business if you do have a background check. But for some people, apparently, they already know them or they're already friends and so they're like, eh, I don't need to. But it's kind of interesting, and then the prices go between um, two, How much? two to twelve dollars. You mean two? Well, I Who mean, pays their babysitters you, two dollars? Are you looking at me? I don't know. Unless you were the church and they're torturing you like you do. How much did you get paid when you went to babysit? Dollar an hour. Dollar an hour. If you went now, how much would you get? Dollar an hour. Dollar an hour. Dollar an hour. See. Yeah, that was uh, except for on Sundays when I was I had to babysit for free because you couldn't work on Sundays and make money. But they so made there you was a, work. There was a very savvy list of parents who were like, hey, Aaron, I know it's Sunday, come on over. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, thanks, I'll do that. So, All right, so. But this is such a great idea. Now, just to make this one step cooler, mm -hmm. what they've done is that she was going through a lot of her concerns about other moms in like, some of the developing countries and the fact that these are women that have to work, but they have nothing. They have no resources, no right, way to help right. with their kids, and they've done things as desperate as drug them, leave them alone at home. Um, oh, my gosh. Tie them up. I mean, because they're that desperate. They've got to make a living for their kids. There's no such thing as welfare in the Sudan. Right. Um, so they have a social giving back model, and that means that for the money that they make and the, and the profits that they're sharing, uh, a chunk of that goes back to um, helping the mother in a developing nation. So like, like a care center kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So an hour of care that's provided in a developed nation, they will provide an hour of care for a mother in need in a developing nation. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I just don't know if I'd like to meet a, a babysitter online. Well, I've made some of my best friends online. But it took a while. We built trust. I'm not sure I would, and especially dropping them off at their house. Yeah. I can't picture dropping Zach and McLean. No background Zoe check, really. No house. background check. Ah, okay. Well, she says you'll do better if you. And she said that for the people who don't do background checks, it may be that they're just reconnecting with old neighbors who went, "Oh, Sue, hi. Yes, could you babysit?" So. Ouch. Um, uh, adoptions of dogs. Adopting dogs. It, everyone's doing it now. They, they have breeds that people save, Siberian Huskies, 
dachshunds. They have all these different My special... My sister has a dachshund rescue charity. One has a goiter, the other one's blind. Look, there's nothing wrong with special needs dachshunds, okay? I love them just the same. Except Go one on. can't see the faces I make at them. Um, so anyway, there's dogs. They're all out there. They're everywhere. And it's like, where do you get your dog? What's going on, you know? And so um, the TSA... People... Uh, have decided to open up their own adoption program. How so? What were their... This is like, this is representative of my life. Okay? Explain. All these dogs are brought into the program. Oh, yeah, and the then, search dogs. Yeah. Airport dogs. Yeah, security bomb dogs. Bomb dogs. Stuff out. Yeah. Drug dogs. And they're all brought into the program. You know, and now they're like, oh, we're all dogs. We're in the program. And they go up like this. And then I don't fit in. <laughs> It's What's like, the criteria for you not like, well, fitting in? Well, uh, sometimes they're too friendly. Oh, sometimes you have to be out of the program because you're too nice. That's sometimes so horrible. Sometimes they're lazy, not lazy, but just like they I don't want to chase a bad guy. Um, other ones that like would, that would be me. My other ones like the smell of pot and don't bark when they're supposed to. I don't know, but the point is, and being the government, of course you've got to make this difficult, and so basically processing and adoption. If you just go to TSA. Uh, adoption uh, program that you'll find all this information. It's in Texas. They don't. You have ship. to really, really want one of these dogs. So you give them all your info, and you think you've been touched closely before, my friends. They go through all this thing. They take you have to take pictures of your house in some I cases. I appreciate that they take it seriously, and they want to make sure the animals are going to a good place. It's almost like the person who's training who loves them so much. Who really wants to make sure, you know. Uh, and when you go to Houston to pick them up, um, you got to stay over. You Why? Don't, you don't walk in and adopt a dog and leave the same day. Doesn't work that way, ma'am. They don't think raise your hands above your they shoulders. Think, <laughs> they don't think you can like fake being nice for more than like a few minutes. So like if they keep you overnight, you're gonna turn into a lunatic if, just in case you really are. I mean, they are. They are. Seems odd, but they are dropouts. Oh, that's so sad. I hope they don't call them that to their face. No, I just think they, they had a great picture of one dog just laying on his back, going, eh. oh, yeah. and he's like, "No, you're supposed to be attacking." <laughs> That's not get them. That's the. Uh. If we need a new dog, I want one of those because I so relate to those dogs. Because it's like, I what? I'm not gonna. I don't want to bite him. That would be rude. But you know, Look at him. I, mean, I know he's got a gun. But come uh, on, I, I don't want to be rude. The one who wins is the dog walking off to a nice SUV, turns around to the cage and goes, "See ya." And they do. That. And you know they, they do. They do that. If you don't believe me, go to the Humane Society and you can walk walk one past the cages and they'll go really slow. Like, right. I'm D getting out. Donovan Mitchell, Utah Jazz, cannot be any nicer. Why? What has he done this time? He's so adorable. We're going to tell you. Coming up next. The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. All right, welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Donovan Mitchell. Now, do you remember he's our rookie for the Utah Jazz? I still think he should have won Rookie of the Year, really. But in any case, um, you may remember during July 4th, he's like, hey, I'm looking for a barbecue on Twitter. And people are like, boing, 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 come to ours, come to ours. And he actually showed up at a couple, and he brought a bunch of the first-year jazz players with him. And he was adorable. Sounds fun. I mean, freakishly adorable. I really love this Now guy. that's over and everything goes to his head. Well, they had a mysterious morning at Kearns High where mm. 300 students were invited into the auditorium. Donovan was there with his mom. This is why I love him. He has his mother there. And he had his agent. And he had this huge table filling up, just overflowing with backpacks with all this cool stuff in it, right, t-shirts. Right. And he had asked the school, could you please pick out 300 of like the great kids, the kids who work extra hard and they might have extra challenges. Right. But they're cool and they try so hard and they want to be part of the community and the world. And, and so those 300 got the reward of getting to hang out with him, take pictures, do a bunch of selfies, pass some stuff out. You know what this reminded me, though, that I love so much? I can't even remember which gigantic player it was, but when we were kissing 97, one of them got hurt really badly, and his mom was there taking care of him. Oh, right, right, right. I remember we went over and did the show live from his right. house. And yeah. I just remember how ridiculously gigantic he was and how much I loved his mother because hmm. he started being just a little bit snarky, and she just looked at him. She just looked at him, and yeah. I've never seen a man crumble like that. It was awesome. Really? 
Very I wish bad. I had that kind of power over our children. But <laughs> you just dream on. Yeah, never. But uh, I mean, he's so adorable, and so they all sat and hung around. They talked to the kids. It wasn't this like, here, take it, go. This is my charity. Thing. They got he their said, backpacks. And he said, I'm going to kind of adopt this school because Kearns has got some, you know, there's a lot of financial title one issues there, and they can use some extra help. And he says, I'll be back to play basketball. And oh, you can just see these. Just gonna kick your butts. I just think that's so wonderful, though. This this guy is so cute. So have anyway. a basketball game. Invite your opponents. They come over. All your team comes out dressed in the uniform, and Donovan comes out dressed in your uniform. Nah, 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 nah. It's like so nah, satisfying. Bye bye. Um, so, uh, what is the latest parent warning? Because every time I think it can't get worse, like the Tide Pod Challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all worried about that Kiki, one. The Kiki Challenge uh, is the latest one that's kind of going oh, through. that's right. Through our cycle on our Facebook pages and stuff. Uh, where you you play the music, Drake is it, mm -hmm. uh, and and, Drake's latest and you leave your car door open and you put the camera on the console and you get out and you dance to it while your car is moving like this. And I this saw one. Really I saw one. Really ill to me. This is a good one, and uh, it was a guy and his truck is rolling a little too fast in in, in neutral, mm -hmm. and going along and he was do, doing the Kiki challenge uh, and he tripped on his cowboy boots and then when he got to the thing he missed the rung and his head went onto the, uh, the steering wheel, hit the horn, um, and it drug him for a little while before he could get his foot on the brake. Yeah. Funny as that is, the new one is the fire challenge. This one's not funny at all. Uh, not in the slightest. I'm not even going to go into what the liquids are, um, but kids are putting uh, flammable liquids on their bodies and lighting themselves on fire. Now, obviously, we're not thinking, oh, you're going to dump it over your head. No. You're going to do something here or something, you know, like, we'll blow it out. Ha, ha, the fire challenge. Um, and obviously, that's not going over well. Apparently, they had forgotten how combustible things like cotton are. Or even worse, some of the synthetic fabrics like polyester. But they've had some incredibly severe burns. Uh, kids who are really, really hurt. And I think everyone it, knows it the damaging seems, effects of fire. It just seems like it would be self-explanatory and you wouldn't have to address this with your kids. But yeah, so we're all going to address this with our kids. Hey, the fire challenge. Let me show you a picture of a burn victim. Matter of fact, if you do the fire challenge, we're going to do the chili challenge with you, and you're going to have to play. Uh, so anyway, new thing going around. Yay, adults. So anyway, just, just warning you. Okay, let's finish with Tell Me Something Good, because Please do. I've been waiting all morning for this. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, first of all, Tell Me Something Good brought to you by PC Laptops. They have 10 locations. You can start with a laptop or a desktop at $7.99. Lifetime service and labor, lifetime warranty, and then of course they go up to unbelievable super secret government computers. They're amazing. So all you have to do, go to PCLaptops.com and they will totally take care of you the way they did for us. Set the scene for me. Okay, we're going to go out with this video, so I just want you to sit and enjoy this, but you're on a subway. Oh wait, wait, Sharon liked the show, it's important. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's extremely important, please, because that also enters you into Dinner for Four at Christopher's Prime Steakhouse. Tell me something good Facebook page where all the good stories gather. Absolutely. And we have a $100 gift card giveaway there as well. All right. Now. All right. So now we can do this. Now we're on a subway. Close your eyes. You're on a subway. And anyone who's been on a subway, everyone's grim. Everyone's cranky because you're on a subway. And there's this guy. He's just your total bro. He's playing a game on his phone. Mm -hmm. And there's a little dude next to him. And... Behind him? He, he, oh, we'll see, we'll he's see. Like, he's we'll like see. straight out of central casting. He's got the little baseball hat on. And right. this kid is adorable. And he's kind of peeking and peeking, I peeking seen this over yet. the shoulder. So he's practically falling into this guy's lap. And that's where the magic happens. So have a wonderful day.